we are trying to understand perfect competition. And a perfect competition is a market structure in which there are very large number of very small sellers. And so since each seller is very small in relation to the larger picture, each seller becomes a price taker. And the example that we had in the last video is that this seller is able to sell each sweater for $25 a piece. And based on that, we figured out total revenue. Now we know the firm is rational and by that we mean it wants to maximize total profits. And to operationalize this, what we have is total revenue at different levels of output. And if we bring in total cost at different levels of output, essentially what the firm has to determine is the output level which maximizes total profits. And once the firm is able to figure that out, it will produce that level of output. And the point where, or the output level where the firm maximizes total profits is called equilibrium. Equilibrium. And that's what we'll try to determine from different angles. Now, look at this table. The first two columns have been reproduced from the table that we had created in the previous video. And that is the firm sells each unit of output at $25. And so based on that, we figured out total revenue. Now here what we do is we bring in total costs. Suppose these costs are known to the firm. Based on these two, we can figure out what will be the total profits. Now note the total costs given here. When the firm produces nothing, it still costs the firm $22. And when the firm produces nothing and it costs the firm $22, this must represent the fixed cost. And fixed cost happens only in the short run. So what we are looking at is the short run phenomenon. So what is total profits? We subtract total cost from total revenue and this becomes negative 22. When the firm produces one unit of output, 25, minus 45, that will be negative 20. And in this way, we can calculate total profits made by the firm at each given level of output. And if this information is known to the firm, what is the output level where the firm makes maximum amount of profit? It will be at nine units of output. You find the firm makes $42 as profit. And this is the highest level of profits. So this must represent the best point or the equilibrium point for the firm in the short run. Another thing you should note is wherever total profit appear to be a negative number, that simply means the firm is incurring losses or the costs exceed revenue. And wherever total profits are positive, this simply reflects that revenue exceeds cost or inflow of cash exceeds outflow and so the firm is making profits. Anyhow for the firm, nine units of output is the best level of output. Why? Because this is where the firm maximizes total profits. Now, now based on the table or the information we had in the previous table, we can draw total revenue, total cost and total profits firm. And what we'll have on the horizontal axis is output or Q. And on the vertical axis, what we'll have is total revenue, total cost, total profits, all in dollars, so financial information. Let us focus on total revenue and total cost curves, so here. Now what you find is we plot those points and you join them and you get a total cost curve. And you also get a total revenue curve. And so this, these curves show a relationship between say total cost and output and total revenue and output. Now, the vertical distance between total revenue and total cost will give us total profits. Why? Because total profits is a difference between TR and TC. 
Now what you find here at low levels of output is the firm is in fact incurring losses and the same thing happens at very high levels of output and why do we say that because at these levels of output total cost exceeds total revenue then you find this zone say from here to here here total revenue is greater than total cost and if we want to find out the point where the firm makes maximum total profits what we have to do is look at the vertical distance and wherever it is the highest you drop this point and what you get is equilibrium level of output and let us represent this as Q superscript E and this is 9 units of output and based on this you can figure out how much will be the total profits made which is the difference between TR and TC. So this is one way to determine equilibrium level of output. We can also directly draw the total profits curve and here you see the total profits curve. Initially you find the firm is incurring losses and this is where total cost exceed total revenue and then you find this zone where the firm total revenue is greater than total cost so the firm is actually making profits and to figure out equilibrium point what you have to look at is the maximum vertical distance of the total profit curve or where the total profit is the highest drop this to the horizontal axis and once again you have determined equilibrium level of output so if there are different ways for a firm to figure out what will be equilibrium level of output based on total curves. Sometimes we may not have total figures like total revenue, total cost. What we may have is average revenue and average total cost. And based on this, we how do we figure out when the firm will make total profits or not? We can do that. This relationship between average and total is important. Consider the following. The town that I live in, the average cost of constructing a house is about $100 per square foot. So if I want to buy a 2,000 square foot house, how much will it cost me? It will cost me $200,000. And so there is a relationship between average and total. And so now let us look at all this from average perspective. Now we have quantity of output total revenue total cost all determined on the previous table and so is total profits now based on these total revenue figures we can figure out average revenue and how much is that it's total revenue divided by total output and this number you can avoid or drop. Now when the firm produces one unit of output the total revenue is $25 or the average revenue will be 25 divided by 1. When the firm produces two units of output total revenue is 50 and the average revenue will be 50 divided by 25. Now if you have information only on average revenue and average revenue is $25 for two units sold what will be total revenue? It will be $50. And in this way, we can complete the average revenue column. And we know average revenue is the same thing as price. And so, and since the price is $25 a piece, this number is a constant. Now we also have total cost figures. We can figure out average total cost. How do we do it? We divide total cost by total output so 45 divided by 1 will give us 45 66 divided by 2 will give us 33 and in this way we can calculate average total cost and then if you know average total cost and the total output produced you can also figure out total cost how will you do that Average total cost times quantity of output will give you total cost. So 45 times 1 will give you 45. 33 times 2 will give you 66. 
and in this way you can figure out total cost. So we can move from av total to average and average to total. Now, in the last column, what I have done is I have figured out the difference between average revenue and average total cost. And what does this represent? This represents average profit per unit of output, per unit of output. <clears throat> And there are different ways we can calculate this. We can divide total profits by total output and we'll get average profit per unit of output. Or we can just look at the difference between AR and ATC and what we get is this column. Now note here, <clears throat> if the firm on an average is incurring a loss, average profit per unit of output is a negative number, what do you find total profits is negative as well. If average profit per unit of output is positive, you find total profits are positive as well. And once you know average profit, you can also once again move to total profits as well. And how would you do it? It's average profit times quantity of output produced and that will give you total profits. On this chart, what I have done is I've plotted the average total cost curve, drawn the average revenue curve, and we have also superimposed total profits. And once again, note, <clears throat> at output levels below four units, you find the firm is incurring losses. On what is happening to average profit per unit of output, this indicates losses for the firm. And the same thing you find at extremely high levels of output. Now here what you find is <clears throat> in this shaded part, if you look at the difference between AR and ATC, the firm is in fact making profits. And the same phenomena you observe when you look at the total profits curve from output of 4 to output of 12, the total profits is a positive number, so we know this. Now, let us calculate total cost based on this ATC curve, average total revenue from this AR curve, and so on. Now, let's look at an easy number. When the output is 4, average revenue is $25. We know that. And what is the average total cost of production at this point? These two are equal, so average total cost of production is 25. So how much will be total revenue? It will be 25 times 4, which is 100. How much will be total cost? It will be average total cost, which is 25 times 4. That will give us 100. And the difference between total revenue and total cost is 0. So here the firm is in a situation of no profit, no loss. And so how did we calculate total cost? Total cost is simply average total cost times output. Now, what is average total cost? It is this vertical distance. What is the total output produced is this much. Or in other words, this total cost we can figure out by looking at the area of the rectangle, which is average total cost this side, and the total output. When we multiply these two, what it will get is total cost of production. So let us label this. Let's call this A, B, C, and D. So what is total cost of production? It will be given by the area of the rectangle, A, B, C, D. And in a similar way, you can figure out total revenue. And so based on average curves, you can figure out the total cost and total revenue. So based off our discussion, you should remember the following rules. If price is greater than ATC, the firm is making profits. If these two are equal, no profit, no loss. And if P is less than ATC, the firm is incurring losses. Thank you for your time.